My name is Stephen Curry again with uh, Washington Lodge number three and I'm here to show you some more of the interesting little artifacts that we have here in our Masonic Temple in Warren, Rhode Island. Um, one of the officers in a Masonic Lodge is called a Tyler and the Tyler's job within the Masonic Lodge is to stand outside of the door of the meeting with a sword in his hand. Now what's the purpose of this gentleman? He's there to make sure that nobody could come up the staircase and listen at the door to what was going on inside and thus keeping our Masonic secrets secret. So over the years, many men who have served in the military ended up donating their swords to Washington Lodge to be used for the Tyler sword. And we have a couple of them here today. Uh, I'd like to first start off with these two swords that look very much like Templar swords. If you have ever seen a Masonic Templar sword, you'd see that they look very similar. The same type of blade, handles, even the knight at the top on the pommel. But these are actually militia officers' swords. And these were issued to the militia officers, which pretty much every town had one, during the 1820s and the 1830s. So from that, we had these two donated by two members who were officers within the militia. This here is a Civil War era musician's sword. Now the musicians at the time were not considered combatants, so they weren't specifically targeted by enemy troops, but it was felt that they had to be able to defend themselves should something go awry. So they were all issued these swords, sort of a short sword really, in order to be able to defend themselves. So this sword here dates from the US Civil War, so between the years of 1861 and 1865. Another sword that we have is referred to as a five ball spadroon, basically because of the five little balls that you have here on the handguard. And you can also see the American Eagle on the pommel. The handle is bone. And this would have been uh, an American Army officer's sword during roughly the, the years of 1790 through about 1815. So basically through the early federal period and the War of 1812. So this is a pretty fairly standard sword for most officers. Now, the very special sword that we have actually belonged to a colonel, and his name was Seth Peck. And he was actually mentioned before as the member of our lodge who saved our charter and had it sealed within a copper box. This was his sword. He was the commander of the East Bay Regiment in Rhode Island, which at the time, the Rhode Island militia was divided into two regiments, the East Bay and the West Bay. So Colonel Peck was commander of the East Bay Regiment, and he donated his sword to us to use as a Tyler sword with its scabbard. It's in a remarkable state of preservation, except for the fact that the handle is actually broken, but it would have a similar style of handle to this, to a handguard. And you can see that there's still some bluing and the acid etching and gold leafing on the blade itself. Now what makes this particular sword so interesting is that the style of sword is called a Marmaluke sword. Now the Marmalukes were the people who ruled Egypt during the Napoleonic Wars, so the early 1800s. And they would fight usually either on horseback or camelback, and they would carry heavily curved wide bladed swords, which made good for slashing down on an enemy. So Napoleon himself, seeing this style of sword, actually adopted it for his own sword. So for all of his battles going forward, whenever he would wear a sword, it would be a Marmaluke style. So this particular sword was very cutting edge, ha, no pun intended, and very fashionable and very expensive. As you can see by the outstanding pommel on the eagle. And someday uh, we hope to have more swords donated to us and add to our 
little collection here that we have at Washington Lodge Number 3 in Warren, Rhode Island. Thank you very much, and it's been a pleasure presenting them to you.